Hello everyone and welcome to the Sharpshooter Scoundrel, uh, no, it's not Scoundrel, Gunslinger, twice I've messed up these intros, Sharpshooter, uh, Gunslinger, that's it, I've been playing a Scoundrel far too much in this expansion to be honest with you, that's why I keep calling, everything's a, everything's a Scoundrel, so we're calling the Sharpshooter Gunslinger 3.0 Overview. Let's take a look at this. I did level. I wasn't intending to do a video on this, but it's kind of an interesting spec. It's one of those specs I never really liked, but it kind of grew on me as a spec. It's kind of grown a little bit, you know, but I think it's pretty decent actually now. I never liked this spec. I did level with this initially as a sniper. It was a marksmanship, and I thought it was quite boring. Uh, I didn't like it in PvP, so I switched to Lethality, because people try and run away from me all the time. That was the thing that always annoyed me. So, what we're going to do, we'll take a little look at that. Well, at least with Lethality, when they tried to run away from you, at least you could dot them. You know, they'd stun you and then run away in this spec, and there was nothing you could do about it. But anyway, we will uh, have a look at our utilities uh, for Sharpshooter now. Um... The first thing we're going to take is Ballistic Dampers. Again, entering cover grants three charges of Ballistic Dampers. Each charge absorbs 30% of the damage dealt by incoming attacks. Again, they can only be gained once every six seconds. The effect can only occur no more than once every one and a half seconds. So again, this is a decent, decent little uh, defensive cooldown that you can activate every six seconds by entering cover. Should point out that we are going to be entering and exiting cover quite a bit so again every time we enter cover uh, gaining that defensive uh, cooldown is pretty nice gaining that 30% damage absorption so it's 30% of the damage dealt so it's a nice little uh, defensive cooldown uh, cool under pressure no nah, it doesn't work out too well in cover we heal for 1% of our total health every 3 seconds it's not worth it it isn't worth it to be honest uh, soloing maybe if you don't have a healer companion but it's not worth it uh, cover screen again maybe again exiting cover increases your ranged defense bear in mind it's only your ranged defense by 20% so that's why uh, ballistic damper tends to win out over that uh, I like to take snapshot entering cover makes the next charge burst or dirty blast activate instantly uh, again, it has a 6 second cooldown. I like this because, again, it gives us that little bit of mobility that we like. Well, it doesn't give us mobility, but it gives us less time sitting still in cover. So we can just get a charge burst off. Bear in mind, charge burst is our main filler now. We don't have sabotage charge anymore, and freighter flyby sucks. So charge burst is, charge burst is going to be our main filler. For this so again dirty blast is your um, uh, dirty fighting thing if you're wondering what that is so we'll cover that in dirty fighting uh, the next one is efficient ammo increase the damage dealt by sweeping gunfire 25% again good for AOE situations bear in mind that we do get where is it the uh, yeah accurized blasters I don't know um, increase the critical chance of sweeping gunfire by 15% and increase its critical damage dealt by 30%. It stacks quite nicely with this one actually. Pretty nice with that one. Uh, flash powder, not really useful for PvE. Bear in mind this is with PvE in mind that we're doing this. So again, um, reduces the target's accuracy by 20% for 8 seconds after flash grenade ends. It's alright in PvP. If you're one-on-one -on -one in PvP it's decent but not really what we want here. Uh, yeah, uh, reset engagement, uh, slapping the target with blaster whip, uh, reset, ugh, ugh. slapping the target with blaster whip grants reset engagement, which again increases our movement speed. We're not going to be meleeing anyone, so, um, um, again, it increases, also increases the final shot of speed shot and penetrating rounds, knocks back the target. Nah, it's not really useful for raiding. PvP is useful, again, getting that speed boost and getting the knockback, uh, especially with penetrating rounds. Uh, so for Masterful, uh, again, I like to take heads up. Uh, when Hunker Down ends or you leave cover while well, Hunker Down is active, you gain heads up, which increases your movement speed by 50% and, crucially, grants immunity to movement-impairing effects. 
pretty nice because there are a lot of bosses that do do movement appearing things to us so it is nice to get that when we use hunker down I like hot pursuit personally I take this as well uh, we gain four charges of hot pursuit when exiting cover so it basically removes the energy cost of quick shot so quick shots energy cost is reduced by 100% this is very good for mobility bear in mind there are times when we're gonna have to move so we're gonna have to be able to attack on the move most of this spec uh, most of the damaging abilities are gonna either require us to be very static so they're going to require us to be very static or in cover. So when we have to move, we have a choice. Uh, our choice for damage is either flurry of bolts or quick shot. Now quick shot does do more damage than flurry of bolts, but it's kind of bad for energy management. So getting hot pursuit gives us four free quick shots, which does a lot more damage as you can see than using flurry of bolts because flurry of bolts is our basic attack consumes no energy uh, so again I would just take this because again the amount of fight the amount of times that we have to move around it's just a good benefit again uh, whenever you stop moving you don't have to consume all four charges because whenever you stop moving you should go back to wherever you were on your rotation uh, again um, Pandemonium activating pulse detonator makes the next charge burst or dirty blast activate instantly. Tend not to take this because pulse detonator is just a waste of a global cooldown to be honest with you. It's just an extra global cooldown that we have to put in. And honestly it's one and a half second cast time on your um, charge burst so I honestly don't see the point in it personally. Just don't see the point in taking this because it's just a you know a, a global cooldown is one second so you're saving half a second is it really worth it i mean we do have snapshot snapshot we are popping into cover you know we're pop cover which is off the global cooldown and we get our instant charge burst there uh so again i would not because again if we activate cover pulse which you have to be in cover for again Oh, it's off the global cool. It's not on the global. And it's not off the global cool then, though. No. Oh well. But we're not really gonna take it just because it's another. It's another button to press essentially. So it's not really a huge benefit. Things like hot pursuit is a much better benefit. Um, dirty trickster again. If we have bosses that do movement impairing effects, uh, again we're gonna take this as well. I'll uh, probably take this as well as heads up just to uh, make sure that we um, get those movement impairing effects gone. Um, trip shot, waste of time in PvE, just a cooldown of leg shot. Uh, hot wire defenses is a decent one again. Uh, increase the amount of damage absorbed by defense screen. I tend to prefer heads up though, again just because it gives us the movement speed and the immunity to movement impairing effects over defense screen increase but again you can always take that um lay low reduces the cooldown of hunker down it's kind of tempting to take this one but maybe we will swap out hot pursuit for this uh it depends if you're if you're struggling if you're dying a lot in raids if you're being a bit of a burden to the healer maybe drop hot pursuit and take lay low just to get that extra from hunker down so you can combine it with heads up so maybe but again if, if we're doing story mode raids we can usually get away with hot pursuit uh, but doing for hard mode progression maybe we need to think about our survivability down the line I'm not going to be doing progression on this character so I'm going hot pursuit just to increase the damage again survivability is pretty key especially with the nerf to healing um, so I would consider that maybe over hot pursuit but again by default you're probably going to take hot pursuit uh, we'll move on to heroic um, plan B and C pointless really we're not really using dirty kick flash grenade uh, more of a PvP thing uh, hold your ground with just the cooldown of escape defense screen and pulse detonator pretty interesting again maybe because if we want to use things like especially if you were going to take pandemonium You'd probably take hold your ground because again reducing the cooldown getting that extra bit of pulse detonator again if you're taking hot wire defenses you probably want to take hold your ground so again it depends on what you take uh, you'll go for um, I like 
hold up, reduce all area of effect damage taken by 60% while Hunker Down is active. I'm thinking of the Underlurker here, just thinking of that fight <laughs> and the amount of area damage that you take in that fight. So again, I'm thinking of that as a lot of AoE damage and also Sword Squadron, pretty big for AoE damage. Also the, um, what's the second last boss called? The one with the two droids in, uh, what's it called again? Uh, Ravagers, that one as well, and the last boss of Ravagers as well. It's quite a bit of AoE damage, quite a bit of area damage going out, so I like Hold Up. Hold Up's a decent one. Uh, again, you'd probably want, maybe want Lay Low, again, if you're doing progression. Uh, knee Capping's kind of pointless, really. Uh, mostly for PvP again. Increase the trauma duration of Flourish Shot by 6 seconds. Flourish Shot, um... Flourish Shot has no cooldown, really, so I don't know why you'd want to increase its duration. I guess, you know, uh, that we could, uh, you could argue that, you could make the argument it's less refreshes, but again, I would just uh, not bother with that. Again, compounding impact, each each shot of speed shot, penetrating around, snares the target, uh, snares the target by 20% for 3 seconds. You know, it's um, PvP. We're not going to be snaring raid bosses. I do like Riot Screen, though. Reduce the damage taken while in cover by 6%. Reduces all damage taken while in cover 6%. Again, thinking of things like the Underlurker and... Uh, what's it called again? Uh, Sword Squadron. I'm missing out on all these things. And again, reducing the cooldown of Scrambling Field by 30 seconds. Now, Scrambling Field is one of your most important utility skills. There it is, it deploys a scrambling field again. It is a AoE um, defensive cooldown. Pretty nice, it affects everyone inside it. There it is, you wanna take a look at it. We can use it out of cover now, we can use it while moving. We used to have to stay in cover. So again, it is a nice uh, utility to have, especially on fights where there's a lot of damage going out. So again, reducing if there's especially if there's a lot of area damage again thinking of the underlurker here a lot of area damage going out we can be that class pretty good utility class actually we are as a gunslinger bit boring but we're a good utility class uh crippling diversion diversion slows the targets by 50 percent as long as they remain in the area i don't see the point in that to be honest with you so we'll look at what we get new well the first thing we get exclusive to Sharpshooter is aimed shot. If you remember aimed shot all gunslingers got this prior to 3.0 So we get aimed shot and that's our first thing is now exclusive to sharpshooter spec Of course, uh, yeah, it's pretty decent. It has a long cast time. It's cast time I think has been reduced to two seconds. However, we do have uh, If we hit two charged bursts, uh, it cuts this by half a second. We get charged aim uh, So it's 0.25 of a second uh, each charge burst. So every two charged bursts we're gonna want to fire off an aimed shot. That's what that's what we're gonna do. Just because it reduces the cooldown by half a second. Again, it used to do this. But I think it was a second it took off it beforehand. But I think the actual I think this was two and a half seconds actually, and it's been reduced to two. So again, it's probably the same. It's one and a half seconds anyway. I don't remember much of the spec because the last time I played it was like 1.6, and I played this. Uh, a little bit in 2.0, I went from level 40 to 55 on this spec, so not quite up to speed, as up to speed on it as I maybe should be. But again, we're going to explain uh, these things. Again, the other thing we get is penetrating rounds, uh, which basically replaces speed shot. So we don't use speed shot in this rotation, speed shot we just can discard. Uh, we get penetrating rounds, which is the replacement for it. Uh, it does sunder the enemy, uh, the target uh, reduces their armor rating by 20%. Uh, it's pretty decent actually, this is our main damage ability is going to be penetrating rounds for the spec. This is going to be the thing we're going to keep uh, pretty much on cooldown all the time. We do have a burst volley which finishes the cooldown and increases our alacrity. Uh, the other new thing we get is honed shots. So whenever we hit a charge burst it grants us honed shots, it increases critical hit chance by 5%, critical chance by 5% on charge burst uh, for 20 seconds and it stacks up to 3 times. So again an extra 15% crit we are going to get from our charge burst. And bear in mind charge burst is our go to filler 
kind of thing. So we'll get to the uh, rotation now. Um, basically, there are a few ways to approach this rotation. Pretty open-ended, this rotation. Uh, again, uh, we're making use of Burst Volley. Burst Volley will immediately finish the cooldown on Penetrating Rounds, meaning we can get two off. Uh, the temptation is to just hit Penetrating Rounds and then get Burst Volley off and then get more another penetrating rounds this doesn't really work out too well in raids because at some point we are going to have to move within usually the first part of the raid so we tend to open our opening gambit tends to be uh our opening attack is penetrating rounds bear in mind we want to keep uh things like trick shot trick shot on cooldown generally we want to keep uh we want to keep uh aim shot we only want to use when it procs so basically when we get the uh two uh, what's it called again? Uh, charge burst. I keep thinking of the sniper. I keep gonna I, just because I played a sniper for so long. I just keep having to think about this as a gunslinger. Keep calling it snipe. Uh, flourish shot. Do you want to keep that on at all times? So we're probably um, the only thing is that freighter flyby. It's not really worth it anymore, to be honest with you. I don't think that freighter flyby. Just doesn't do enough damage to be worth it. Used to be our filler, but the fact that we have to be in cover to use it, it has a long channel time. Uh, you probably could use it, I guess, if you wanted while the tar while the tank is pulling, but it is very situational. So um, again, if the ready check gets done and the tank decides not to pull, another thing we'll point out is Smuggler's Luck. Now, Smuggler's Luck increases the critical chance of aimed shot sabotage charge or wounding shots by 100% so we are going to use it with aimed shot this time. Uh, it used to give you the auto crit to charge burst uh, but now it is basically wounding shots, aimed shot, sabotage charge. They are, the other two in that are exclusive to the other specs. Aimed shot is our one that we're going to use because it's the only one we have access to in the spec. So our opening attack is, I like penetrating rounds, then I pop into cover, get one of them off, get our charge burst off, I missed that there, get our charge burst again, and then get our aimed shot off, and then what happens is this comes off cooldown, we can hit it again, we can then pop our burst volley thing, and we can then get back into cover for another instant cast, and again I'm missing a lot of these things actually. I <laughs> missed a lot of those things out in that rotation. So that is the rotation I like to go for. It kind of works out pretty nicely. Again, we probably want illegal mods as well, which increases our accuracy by 30% and armor penetration by 15%. So our goal basically is to keep our three stacks of honed shots and keep up our uh, penetrating rounds debuff and keep up our flourish shot debuff so again we'll try that again when this comes off cooldown we'll just wait for it to come off cooldown so I like this as a rotation get that on get this on fire another one of these off fire that off then we fire this off and again whenever it's available come on ability lag there come on ooh bit of ability lag and then back into cover. And again, if we ever have to move, we just come out and we can use these and they won't cost any energy. So again, we get four of them. So basically our rotation, that is our ideal kind of, well that's the rotation I like to go for anyway. You can use penetrating rounds, burst volley, penetrating rounds again. You could do that, but I think it works out pretty nicely because we're getting three, what is it, we're getting four penetrating rounds off in that rotation instead of the usual uh, two, so I think it works out pretty nicely in that rotation. Uh, again, I uh, probably want to use Smuggler's Luck before using Aim Shot, again, just to increase damage. Uh, I like illegal mods after... Uh, basically when we're using penetrating rounds, we use illegal mods, penetrating rounds, Burst Volley, Penetrating Rounds would be the best time to use that. But this is just an overview, this is not a guide. So we're just kind of discussing uh, the basics of the rotation. We're not getting into the advanced things. Uh, it's pretty easy as a rotation. Uh, it's pretty much easy. Uh, we want to keep Flourish Shot up as often as possible. Um, it's a bit boring, really, I suspect. Everything's all uh, Blaster. 
bolts, to be honest with you, so I find it a little bit boring, personally. Uh, what we will talk about is gearing. Uh, again, DPS, so accuracy is the cap. Bear in mind she is only uh, 186 gear, and we're not doing anything with this character. All her ultimate and elite comms are going towards the healer, going towards my scoundrel, actually. So we're just using her as a bit of an ult to do that, so she probably won't get gear until, unless it's like, gear my scoundrel doesn't need. So she does have the odd, like, 192 armoring that my scoundrel didn't need, but other than that, we are 100% accuracy crit. Probably want 25% crit in an ideal world, but in 186, uh, 23 ain't bad. Uh, surge, again, we probably want quite a bit of surge, we want about 70% surge, bear in mind that we do get the uh, the uh, honed shots which again increases our crit chance by 15% when it stacks up to 3 times, so again the more crit we have, the more uh, surge we have, the more uh, damage those uh, charge burst crits will do, so again that's to work on really. Uh, probably want, again, 25 crit plus the 15 will net as well, 45% crit chance of charge burst when it's a, um, that's pretty good, we probably want to get that to 50, so we probably want, probably want to get that close to 50 ultimately, so 25, well, 45 is not bad actually, so again, accuracy, we are a cap, so we're never going to miss with anything, a lot of accuracy in our gear we're taking these days. Uh, just because we don't get any accuracy from the uh, the bonuses anymore, our skill trees have gone. Uh, so again, I've taken most things have accuracy, power accuracy. Uh, we have a few things that are crit accuracy, but I think 192, our goal would be to get to 25, and 70% surge then would be our goal in 192, because we can, of course, start to drop accuracy, because 192 has more accuracy, or 186 only has 102, that is an augment, 148. So again, it's usually 8 pieces if you don't have the companion bonus, plus an augment gets you 100% accuracy. But again, uh, as for augments goes, uh, because we're low on crit, because we're 2% down on crit, we will be going for main stat, we'll be going for cunning as our priority for augments, apart from that one which is accuracy to get us the accuracy cap. Eventually we'll drop this when we get to 192, we'll drop that augment, replace it with cunning. Uh, eventually we'll probably drop some of these for power surge. Uh, hopefully we'll get, yeah, probably power surge would be the thing to go for again because we've got that little crit bonus and we've got the uh, critical, uh, again, a critical chance of sweeping gunfire as well. So a lot of things benefit from surge in this spec. So we probably want to hit about 70 is a good benchmark. 75 is like the diminishing return point on crit multiplier and surge rating. So I would suggest 70, 70 is a good place to be. 25 crit and max accuracy and the rest of course would just be power. Mo once you hit 25% crit the rest of your augments are power so I would go alacrity Maybe a factor, but not now. Um, we don't have any alacrity, I don't think. Yeah, we got zero alacrity. It may be a factor, because again, in fights that we have to move around, because we are going to spend time channeling, penetrating rounds, and casting aimed shot. So maybe, but we're talking 198 at least before we're looking at that. So again, when we're at 25% crit. 70, probably about 70% surge, then whatever stats we're left with could probably go power alacrity rather than power surge. You know, that would be, that would probably be the ultimate, the ultimate kind of thing that I would suggest. So again, a character we've only raided on recently, this character, so again, a 12 times XP character, so we don't have any affection with our companions. I don't even know if I've got all my companions, to be honest with you, on this character. I think I'm on Hoth actually, my class quest, although I got Gus, so yeah, we did get Gus, so again, 12 times XP character, that's why we're having to take so much accuracy these days, uh, again, relics are fairly simple, Rusan relics uh, to start off with, I prefer them to the purple ones because they're a bit cheaper, bear in mind that the first boss in Temple of Sacrifice, which is quite an easy boss to defeat, does give you the 192 relic, so that's probably going to be your goal. Uh, over the relics. 
Right, so uh, that is kind of all for us. Uh, the only thing, the last thing we put out is diversion. Now this is the thing that is going to make you... It's going to make guilds want to take you on raids, want to take a gunslinger on raids. Diversion is a debuff which uh, affects the enemy target. It reduces their accuracy. Uh, reduces accuracy by 45% exposes from cover up to 8 enemies within 8 meters for 8 seconds oh it can't be used on ops bosses, oh that's kind of useless then if it doesn't reduce the accuracy again, oh it can't be used oh well, uh, so again on trash and in HM flashpoints you're going to want to throw a diversion out it's good for the adds of bosses you can see they get the debuff here which reduces their accuracy which is pretty nice. Again, if you're doing HM flashpoints and you're doing uh, ops, uh, trash, or adds for the boss, uh, you want to use this. Again, especially if the adds hit really hard. I'm thinking Depths of Manan type of adds. Again, if those, uh, those adds which do hit very hard, you want to lead them into the fire anyway. But I would always throw a diversion at them as well because again it's going to reduce their accuracy throw the diversion into the fire as well uh, it's just gonna help out especially as the, the healer especially takes a lot of damage the amount of times I have died in that final boss in depths of Manan because again I'm thinking gunslinger throw me a diversion throw a diversion at them please don't make me use my uh, flash grenade because it is a long cooldown that is quite a long cooldown but you got two options flash grenade or diversion so it doesn't work on ops bosses that's a shame it is a nice cooldown for the tank though as well so we can provide help for our tanks again again at this make this separates the kind of good gunslingers from the kind of great gunslingers is doing things like that for the raid is pretty nice and again we've got our don't forget your defensive cooldown as well which can be used now when you're not in cover. It used to be when you left cover it would go off basically. So that is, that's all for this video. We didn't, didn't miss that out. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you again soon and goodbye.